Over the years, I've talked about how when it comes to the boxing fan base, black American fighters are treated differently. They're actually held to a much higher standard. You see, the black American fighter cannot just fight one or two decent fighters. They can't do that. They have to basically walk through the lava and through the volcano and make and make their ways out the volcano without being burned in order to be seen by these types of fans. But when it comes to fighters like Gennady Golovkin, he can fight a half decent fighter and be seen as some type of pound for pound fighter. So in other words, the non-black American fighter don't really have to do much in order to be seen as this top fighter in the sport of boxing. Majority of these fighters that are coming out of nowhere and getting all this attention don't even have a resume. Sure, they can have hardware, but I've always say fighters are who they beat. There's no way around that. If a fighter doesn't have a resume, then how much value does those belts have if that fighter doesn't have a resume? And majority of these foreign fighters don't even have a resume. These anti-black boxing fans can't even have a conversation about 70% of their favorite fighters' resume. They can only talk about a handful of fighters. Case in point, Monster Inoue. Every time someone talks about this man's resume, they tend to only talk about two fighters. Stephen Fulton and Nonito Donaire. That's it. Those two fighters are the center of Inoue's resume. When it comes to Golovkin, you can't really have a conversation about Golovkin's resume because he doesn't have a resume. His resume is centered around Canelo Alvarez, who a fighter he never beat. A few years ago, there was a huge discussion here in this community about being under for a fighter being undefeated doesn't mean everything. It was okay for a fighter to take a loss. And I seen straight through the bull crap because I knew what that conversation was centering around. It was basically fans trying to find ways to place Manny above Floyd Mayweather. See, Manny has eight losses to Floyd Mayweather's no losses. And so what fans were trying to do is normalize fighters with losses while demonize fighters with no losses. Okay? And I saw straight through the bull crap. Because if you fast forward to today, you look at these same fans that were trying to normalize fighters with losses are being highly critical and disrespectful and mocking black fighters that have taken losses. So they contradict themselves without even knowing that they've contradict themselves. You see, I've always said, you know, if you stay quiet and allow these anti-black boxing fans to talk, they're going to expose themselves. Errol Spence Jr., when you look at the responses from the anti-black boxing fans whenever Errol Spence becomes a discussion, it tends to not be a great response from the anti-black boxing community. All of them, they kind of have the same views about Errol Spence. He's trash. He got exposed. And mind you, Errol Spence only lost one time. One time, he lost to Terrence Crawford, a black fighter, mind you. Because a lot of these anti-black boxing fans are trying to make it make Terrence Crawford out to be a fighter who isn't black. Because I heard an anti-black boxing fan say that black people only have Javante Davis, Deontay Wilder, and Errol Spence. Those were our, was our only hope. But ignoring the fact that Errol Spence Jr. lost to a black fighter. A fighter that I think is more black than Errol Spence. Okay? But that's no here, no there. But the point is, is that the anti-black boxing community, they mock Errol Spence Jr. They say he got exposed. They say that he's not what the black fan base say he is because he lost to uh, Terrence Crawford. And mind you, we're talking about an Errol Spence Jr. who was unified, meaning that he went around and collected belts off of each champion. And we're talking about champions that the public knew of, the, that the public respected. Sean Porter was a respected welterweight champion. We knew about Sean Porter. We've acknowledged Sean Porter as being one of the best fighters of this era. So he wasn't some unknown fighter that just came out of nowhere. Sean Porter was a respected champion and Errol Spence Jr. beat him. 
Jordanus Ugas. You see, Jordanus Ugas beat Manny Pacquiao, who beat an undefeated Keith Thurman. Say what you want about Jordanus Ugas now, but the fact of the matter is that Jordanus Ugas beat Manny Pacquiao, who beat an undefeated Keith Thurman. And Errol Spence Jr. took that belt away from Jordanus Ugas. Kell Brook. A lot of you guys like to argue about Kell, or argue that Kell Brook was already broken when he fought Golovkin. That may be the case, but it doesn't change the fact that Errol, that it doesn't change the fact that Kell Brook was the welterweight champion. He took a risk by jumping up two weight classes and challenging Gennady Golovkin, but he came back down as still being the champion or as still being the welterweight champion. You see, a lot of you guys, you say that well, Gennady Golovkin broke Kell Brook's eye. He did, but Errol Spence broke the other eye. It doesn't change the fact that Errol Spence Jr. went to this man's backyard and took his belt. Kell Brook, I don't think he's lost many fights at the welterweight division. I think the only fight that he lost at the welterweight division was against Errol Spence Jr. I'm, he lost two times, excuse me, at the welterweight division. He lost to Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford. He had to come back down to fight Terrence Crawford at the welterweight division. Okay, because he already moved up before he fought Terrence Crawford. And he came down when he fought Terrence Crawford. So technically, Carol Brook was undefeated at the welterweight division. And he was champion before he fought Errol Spence Jr. So Errol Spence Jr. beat champions that the public respected and knew about. But these fans don't acknowledge Errol Spence Jr. for what he's done before he fought Terrence Crawford. But it reminds you, being undefeated doesn't mean anything. You see, these fans, as I speak right now, are still celebrating the outcome of the Ryan Garcia-Devin Haney fight. They're totally dismissing Devin Haney from moving forward and becoming, you know, a multiple division world champion. They're saying that he got exposed when he fought Ryan Garcia. And mind you, the world knows that Ryan Garcia cheated when he fought Devin Haney, but they overlook Ryan cheating because they got what they wanted. They got to see Devin Haney lose. The, 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 these fans' main priority was seeing Devin Haney lose at any cost. This is what most of these boxing fans or these anti-black boxing fans watch the sport for, just to see a black fighter lose. But when it comes down to them defending their favorite fighter for taking losses, they come out with this bullcrap uh, excuse by saying or claiming that being undefeated doesn't mean everything. It's okay for a fighter to take a loss, right? But that don't apply for the black fighter. If a black fighter lose, then that's the end of the world for that black American fighter. The, the anti-black boxing fan base will make sure that that black American fighter that do lose never hears the end of it. They circle that, that black fighter's whole entire career around that one loss or two losses. But then defend their fighters for taking losses. Manny Pacquiao has eight losses. Canelo Alvarez has two losses. Roman Gonzalez has multiple losses. Lomachenko has three losses. But you never hear these anti-black boxing fans criticize those fighters for having losses.